So Jamie, tell us a bit more about Fearless. What was it about it that made you want to do it? Uh, well, the, the very first thing was, was the acting talent that was on show in, in the show. I was desperate to work with Helen McCrory, who I'm a big fan of. She's a huge stage star at home. And when I was training at Lambda, I remember uh, going to see her in uh, Chekhov play Wild Honey that, and uh, seeing her up close, and she's, she was incredible. So her and Sir Michael Gambon get a chance to work with another one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. Patrick Harbinson, the writer, is someone that I'd worked with before, um, and, uh, and and then the story. Um, you know, it's a, it, I love political uh, 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 legal thrillers, but one that is very much about the the contradictions and complexities of today's world, with um, states uh, sacrificing our individual freedom in order to preserve our individual freedom and the inherent contradiction within. I think when it's something about something so real and prescient to us right now. Um, then those uh, twisty, turny thrillers that are edge of the seat stuff become the stakes just rise, and uh, it, it was those those things: the writing and the acting talent. Patrick Harbinson was behind as well. Homeland, Twenty Four. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the bar is really high to match the, that level? It is. It is. But I but I feel he's done it because I think this this story is is so contemporary. I mean, Donald Trump hadn't been elected when we were filming, but footage of Donald Trump is all over the all over the piece now, uh, I, I've noticed. So, you know, things change so fast, and this is a story rooted in, in today's world, and this fight that is unwinnable, in a sense, against, uh, you know, uh, cross-border terrorism, uh, which, it, it, it's a complicated script, because it starts off with a miscarriage of justice, which seems to be quite a simple case. It's, a, it's about a murder, a man, and a, and a teenage girl, um, sort of borderline pedophilia, things that we see in the papers and react very strongly to all the time. But it's wonderfully written because this this champion of the underdog, this lawyer, has, like all lawyers do, several cases on the go at once, and you don't know which one's going to be the significant one. So it's a story that has twists and turns and becomes more and more significant and more and more prescient about today's world uh, the more you keep watching. You're so uniquely placed to talk about an international festival mm. because you're half French, live here, have done work in the States on things like NCIS, work in the UK, obviously. Do you notice a real difference between working in these three different places or do you feel like television is crossing boundaries now, crossing Te borders? Television's absolutely crossing boundaries. Television used to be quite parochial. Even in the US, I, I, I felt when I started working in the US, um, you know, turn of the century, uh, that TV was made for Americans, 100%. And cable changed that because cable started to go after much more niche markets, not being scared to alienate some viewers in order to really entertain and stimulate others. And I felt I was in the right place at the right time. It was the golden age of cable television. Um, you know, The Sopranos had come and gone, and, and Battlestar Galactica emerged to be this you know, cult hit straight away with the US media. And I was one of the very few British actors working in America at that time. Um, I now feel the same thing about being back in Europe. I think uh, European television has really switched on, realizing it's not making television just for the UK or just for France, but for the world. And television uh, companies co-produce now more than ever across national borders. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, yeah, I, I'm very proud to be a half, half Irish, half American, half British. That's three halves. I'm fully <laughs> aware of the error um, living in, in France. And um, you know, it's something that I, I, I relish when I read scripts like Fearless, which you know starts being quite a focused little story, but you realize that the ramifications of this woman's challenge are across all borders. So, you know, po po the, the, the political, the judicial, um, the uh, international diplomacy, and, um, and uh, everything that she's trying to do is inherently complicated. And, you know, with our recent politics in Europe here, uh, that's the truth. Whether we try to make national decisions for the benefit of our own people, you can't ignore that the issues we face are, are global, always. And we have to address that. On va juste peut-être faire celui-là en français aussi. D'accord. Donc grosso modo, Merci. la question était vous êtes bien placé pour parler de tout en fait ces télévisions différentes dans ces pays différents. Est-ce que vous trouvez que ils se retrouvent ou est-ce qu'ils sont encore très différents? Euh, non, à l'époque quand je vivais aux États-Unis, euh, quand j'ai euh, commencé à travailler là-bas, j'ai vraiment aperçu que euh, la télé américaine était en train de s'ouvrir au monde. Et c'était évident avec les castings qui devenaient de plus en plus internationales et les histoires étaient pour le monde. Alors j'ai tourné une série, Battlestar Galactica, qui est la série par excellence, qu'il s'agissait de, de la population humaine et non pas américaine, non pas euh, quelque chose de spécifique culturellement. 
Et je trouve maintenant que la télé anglaise, la télé française, est en train d'apercevoir les mêmes leçons. Et ils font la télé maintenant, non pas pour la population française ou la population anglaise, mais, mais pour le monde. Et les histoires sont des histoires internationales, qu'il s'agisse de, de géopolitique mondiale, non pas focalisée sur, sur, sur nos, notre euh, propre société. Euh, et, et donc je suis ravi de, de vivre en France et de travailler à, en Londres, en Bulgarie. J'ai tourné un film en Bulgarie récemment et c'est pour ce, ces raisons-là que l'Europe me manquait à l'époque quand je vivais aux États-Unis, c'est cette différence culturelle qu'on a, qu a chez nous ici. Merci. Merci. C'est parfait.